Good afternoon, I'm Malcolm Jordan and this is your Midday News Fix for Friday the 10th of May. The Defence Force is getting an extra half a billion dollars over the next four years. Of the $571 million, $163 million will go into improving pay and $408 million on improving and upgrading equipment and infrastructure. Political editor Jason Walls has more. Subject to final cabinet sign-off, the new money will pay for NH-90 helicopter navigation systems, new military operation vehicles and access to a state-of-the-art maritime time hostile detection system. Defence Minister Judith Collins says the Defence Force cannot do their jobs without the right equipment and conditions, which is why the funding's been unlocked. The funding includes 107 million of savings from within the NZDF budget. Travel plans of Air Vanuatu passengers remain up in the air as the airline's flights have been cancelled until Sunday. Hundreds of travellers across the Pacific, New Zealand and Australia have been left stranded. Vanuatu's national carrier has entered into voluntary liquidation after being plagued by technical faults for several months. Nine News reporter Sarah Stewart says people with upcoming flights should talk to their travel providers. For the people over in Vanuatu, we're hearing stories of people stuck over there with young children that are heavily pregnant, people that need to get home for work. They're being told they have to basically ride it out. Retailers hope a promised lift for people's back pockets will get customers back in stores. In a pre-budget speech yesterday, Finance Minister Nicola Willis indicated that tax cuts will be aimed at middle and lower income workers. Retail New Zealand CEO Carolyn Young says people are hesitant to spend. The retail sector you know, really hurting right now, so it would be really great to see uplift in that sort of space and confidence is key. A Christchurch bulb maker says using LED lighting is a simple way to reduce load on electricity supply with better bang for your buck. Transpowers asked households to limit their power usage this morning, concerned the frosty morning could cause outages. But EcoBulb's managing director Chris Marden says the solution could be as simple as putting in LEDs. He says it's already happening in countries like Australia and the US and it has a huge payback in lowering household power bills. If you change all those light bulbs, you would basically save about as much carbon for the next 10 years as all the cars in New Zealand use on the road in one year. The Drug Foundation's offering free testing after a second fake tablet has been found to contain a strong synthetic opioid. It looked like an anti-anxiety tablet and police warn people taking it are at risk of harm or even death from just one tablet. Ethan Manera has the details. The drug was found in a blue diazepam tablet in Wellington last month, causing a high alert in the dangerous drug warning system. Now the substance has also been found in another tablet that was submitted to a drug checking clinic in Bay of Plenty. Hopes the youth market can be the key to the tourism sector's continued survival. A recent survey shows about 80% of tourism operators are optimistic about the next 12 months, but are also conscious of cost-related challenges. To sport, former All Black Peter Alatini maintains first fives around the country will be discouraged by New Zealand rugby's plans to lure Richie Moonga back early from his contract with Japanese side Toshiba. And Colin Munro has retired from international cricket. He had made himself available for the World T20 next month in the Caribbean, but the Black Caps selectors opted against picking him. I'm Malcolm Jordan. That's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at 5pm from the News Talk ZB Newsroom.